All right, how are you guys doing today? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you. And in the last video, we took a look at using properties of parallelograms. And in this video for section 8.3, we're going to show that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So how do you do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. There are four ways to show a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Here's the first one. You could show that both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent. So I want to direct your attention to this picture down here on the left. Now this is one of the ways, and what you're going to do if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So that means this side right here would be the same thing as this one over here. And this side over here would be the same as this one over here. So that's one way you could show quadrilateral as a parallelogram. Now a second way is to show that both pairs of opposite angles in the quadrilateral are congruent. So this angle right here, whatever number that is, is going to be the same thing as this angle right here. They'll both be the same. And then this angle up here and this one in the lower left, both of those are going to be the same too. And a lot of times you won't have a diagram marked. You'll actually have numbers in the diagram or you'll have to find a piece, a value of x or something like that. Now there's a third way and this involves one pair of sides. And with one pair of sides, you could show that they're both congruent. So this side right here and this side right here could be congruent. And they've got to be parallel. So we might have to bust in some of our properties of parallel lines to show that uh, those two lines are parallel. So we could do it with either that side, our pair of sides, the ones in the top and the bottom of our figure, or sometimes they'll be on the ones on the left or the right hand side. So that's a third way to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Fourth way, you can show that the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other. So what that means is if you have a diagonal right from one corner to the next and another one, when they intersect each other, if you can show that this diagonal gets bisected as well as the other one, and this kind of looks like an envelope, but if you can show that the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, boom, your quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Now we're going to take a look at using those one of those four reasons. We're going to be given some numbers to kind of play around with those four reasons and figure out how we can show a quadrilateral is a parallelogram in these three examples. What you're going to have to use is use your powers of observation to figure out which one of those four reasons, if any, could be used to show that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So let's take a look at example number one information provided in the diagram. We've got one pair of sides that's 30 and that same pair of sides is parallel because we can see that by the markings on our diagram. That's what those little triangles mean right there. So based on that, which one of those four reasons would it be? Yeah, you are a rock star because you know this stuff. Since one pair of opposite sides of the quadrilateral are congruent and parallel, bam, where the figure is a parallelogram thank you for playing. And that's all you have to do. Be sure you write out a sentence that justifies and explains your reasoning. You can't just write the word yes or no. Make sure you write a sentence with one of those four reasons. Moving on to example number two. Check it out! We've got two pairs of sides that are both congruent. Which means, which of our reasons could we use? Yeah, you guessed it. That very first one that's at the top. Both pairs of opposite sides of the quadrilateral are congruent. So again, we're going to have to write that in a sentence. We can't just say, yeah, the figure's a parallelogram. So don't be lazy. Make sure you write a sentence. So that's what our sentence would be. Since both pairs of opposite sides of quadrilateral are congruent, figure's a parallelogram. Now, check out our last example, number three here. Now here, I've got information about all of the angles on the inside of my figure. So what I want to do is check out my angles here, because you got some mad skills. Look at this stuff. You got this angle 65, well so is this one up here. They're opposite angles. And then check out these angles right here. I got 115 right there and 115 right there. Booyah! Which one of my four reasons is that one going to be? Hmm. Yeah, you got some mad skills with parallelograms and observational techniques. So you're going to use that and you'll write a sentence to explain for that one as well. So your sentence would be, since both pairs of opposite angles of the quadrilateral are congruent, figures a parallelogram. Thank you very much for playing. Now we're going to take a look at another example. Now in this picture, 
we're asked to find what value of x is a quadrilateral CDF of a parallelogram. So we're given a picture and check out the way it's marked. I can see these markings right here on the diagram. Now if that quadrilateral is a parallelogram, remember I've got four reasons I can use to prove that a figure is a, is a parallelogram and which one of those four would I use. And this is where you're going to have to use those observational techniques and some math skills and your reasoning skills to put that all together. Bam! You got to know that diagonals bisect each other in a parallelogram. So if that's the case, that means this piece right here, this 5x minus 8 and the 3x, both of those pieces are going to be the same value. So that's easy to set up an equation. You got the 5x minus 8 equal to 3x. Then you just got to use some mad algebra skills, get after that and solve that. Now take your time, make sure, be careful, watch your signs. Most people will start it like this. They'll say, oh, let me subtract 5x. All right, so we're good with that. We subtract 5x on both sides. Now, on the right-hand side, most people, no problem, they'll get the negative 2x. Well, be careful on the left-hand side. It's not just 8 that comes down, but negative 8. So that's a common error. People will mess that up. Now again, what we want to do is divide them both sides by 2, negative, and negative 2 on the other side, and we can easily see that we get a value of 4 for x. And that's all we had to do for that one. So let's reread the question. For what value of x is a quadrilateral CDEF, a parallelogram? Well, we solved that. Here's where you want to make sure, like double check, you didn't make a mistake. So if I put in 4 to the 5x minus 8 part, I have 5 times 4 minus 8. 5 times 4 is 20 minus 8, so I end up with 12. And then my other piece, the 3x part, when I put 4 in there, when I put 4 in there, we end up with 12. So both of these values are the same. So that's my check to make sure that I got that correct. All right. Don't be lazy and just say, okay, well, I got a number for x, so I'm done and I'm moving on. Sometimes take that extra step and just make sure that what you got is correct because that's going to separate you and it's also going to help you pick up any careless mistakes that you make. Because I've seen students all the way up to calculus who can do great mathematical work, but they mess up on adding and subtracting. It's a common mistake. So just take your time and check, and then you've got that piece. Now we've got one more example in this section. So let's get after example number five. Here in this picture, we're told that in a quadrilateral WXYZ, measure of angle W is 42, X is measure of angle X is 138, and the measure of angle Y is 42. We've got to do two things. First, we got to find the measure of angle Z. Then, we've got to use that information to determine if WXYZ is a parallelogram. So first thing we got to do is draw a picture to represent this stuff. So when we do that, now it doesn't really matter where you start, as long as you get a picture that represents. Now when you draw your picture, make sure your letters go in the order that they're presented up here. So we've got that information, then we're going to go ahead and plug in the other information we know. 42 degrees is how much W is, X is 138, and Y I get 42. We know that this is a quadrilateral, so what do you know about the sum of the interior angles for a quadrilateral? You better know that they add up to 360. And if you totally forget that, if you just blank out on that, here's one way around that. If we just started at a vertex and we drew a diagonal to the other side, notice we have one, two triangles. So each triangle's got 180 degrees, and at two of them, that means I'm going to have a total of 360 degrees. So if you totally forget that there are 360 degrees in a quadrilateral, just draw a diagonal, and then you can see you have two triangles, and you'll be good to go from there. Once I remember that I've got 360 degrees in a quadrilateral, I'm just going to add up all my angles. So measure of angle W is 42, and then the measure of angle X is 138, and then the measure of angle Y is 42, and Z, I don't know what that is yet, so I'm just going to put uh, measure angle Z, and all of that is going to equal 360 degrees. So Z is the piece, the missing piece. That's the one I've got to find. Now when I add up these three guys right here, I'll get a total of 222 for those guys, plus and the measure angle Z, which I don't know yet, that's going to give me 360. Now remember, I want to subtract 222 from both sides to solve for the measure of angle Z. So minus 222 goes there, negative 222 goes there, and really you should be in a level of algebra where you don't need to write that step, and you can just go right to this step where you have the measure of angle Z, and you do that subtraction, 
you end up with 138. So that was the first thing that I had to do, was figure out that the measure of angle Z is 138. Now once I figure out the measure of angle Z is 138, what I want to do is put that in my picture. So I'm going to go ahead and write 138 right there. Now I've got to use my mad observational skills again to check this out. I've got 138 right here and 138 right there. So those angles, those opposite angles, well, they're the same. And then this angle right here, 42 for Y, and 42 for W, well, they're opposite angles and they're congruent also. So which one of my four reasons can I use now to say that this quadrilateral, WXYZ, is a parallelogram? You've got the skill set now. So you go ahead and write yourself a sentence, and your sentence will go a little something like this. Since both pairs of opposite angles of quadrilateral WXYZ are congruent, quadrilateral WXYZ is a parallelogram. Thanks for playing the algebra game today and using your powers of deduction to get after these different figures and show that they are parallelograms. Now that's it for this lesson. Nothing more to do with this other than just take your time, make sure you set up an equation correctly. Make sure you solve for a value of x or y or z. You'll usually have to solve for something. And then go back and write a sentence that explains your reasoning why a figure is a parallelogram. Again, don't be lazy and just say yes or no, it's a parallelogram. Write a reason. And that's it for this. So I'll catch up with you guys soon. You guys have a great day. Peace out.